Welcome to Three on the Ones and Twos with your hosts, Tom, Cassie, and James. Just three old friends talking about their favorite records. Think of it as the coolest book club for music nerds. Man, I'm so offbeat these days, but also I've always been offbeat. Um, I want to say this. Welcome to Greg and Jesse 2 Electric Boogaloo, the three second the coming. Twos. Thank you, Jesse, for the last episode. We love, uh, we, we, we're just having the best day at Trackside Tavern. Thank you to Mikey Brennan, Brian Colantuno, Trackside Tavern. Don't forget Cassie. Of course, shout out to Cassie. I just got a text from her. She's in Munster, Germany. It's crazy. Holy moly. Hanging out with, uh, I hope she needs some cheese. Hanging, hanging out with Ar- Anster Neubauer. <laughs> <laughs> she's like playing uh, the radiator. Yeah. And it's her. crazy because she's wearing a kilt. I don't get it. You know. But anyway, so we talked about this earlier, but I have no problem repeating things. Uh, you know, uh, I've tried to live this Buddhist uh, lifestyle now for like four years, and I'd say for the most part, it's done nothing but good for me. Nothing but love and peace and happiness in my life. And I love being around just wonderful, beautiful people. If it's toxic, my name's Saul. That's between y'all. I'll see you at the door. Greg and Jesse. Hi there. Thank you so much. We'll do a shot later. Thank you. You're beautiful. I'm feeling um, pretty toxic this so, episode, so, though. So. <laughs> If you're, t- if you're toxic, we'll, are, we'll see you at the train tracks at 3 o'clock Things high. are taking a turn. Um, but, um, you know... We, we, episode one was with Jesse. Yes, it was so great. I, and I loved it. Um, episode 30. <laughs> yes. I don't know what it is. We love this show. <laughs> and it's just basically the whole idea is old mates, old friends who share the same compassion. It's talking about music, yep. things they love. So, I'm going to let James talk. And then, skin, 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 we're going to let Greg talk. Okay. Senior high school, we played a show together uh, at the Summer Reptile. That's probably the first time we came in contact. Same with you. You were probably a senior in high school when we played a show together. When yes. you were, and you were in college. And you were in college. But I was like, so. I was like a maybe a sophomore in high yeah. school. And I was a great. I was car versus driver. And I was a great. Yeah, I was yeah. a. I was and a great. I saw midget farm. farmers before that. So, sure. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, we, we, got, we, we didn't talk. A lot of we didn't talk. Yeah. <laughs> James, James is not a guy who talks much, but when he talks, you listen. Like we we've shared the most words in the past six months ever, and we I've known him twenty some years. Rockets or at, at, uh, under the couch. I mean, I like looked up to y'all pretty hard at, back in the day. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, yeah. So I was like, when when I would run into you at the record stores. I definitely was paying attention to what you were buying, and you would always yeah. tell me to like get it, like what what fall record to buy. And whatever. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's right. funny. It's funny. Like when we first started experimenting and doing the show, and I'm like, my mom used to like squeeze my ear and make me sing the song come out tomorrow, and put a really bad red plastic Michael Jackson jacket on me, and I saw Journey, and James like, I bought the Buzzcock singles. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> you're way cool. You're way cool. <laughs> Well, you're you're way like you're way co- you're way yeah, cooler than me. Greg, <laughs> like, Greg, Greg, yeah. Greg came out of the womb with a devil lock. So yeah, you know, like, I was yeah. pen pals with Emperor. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah, but some how of us, old were you? <laughs> Fifteen. Some of us 15. has to grow. Some of us have to grow to be cool, and some of them are just cool. Yeah, yeah it comes just, out. So that was a cool. But in, in real life, that was. Just so cool. anyway, um, so I, but also I love I love uh, love and I love how much what we all know each other and and our, our, I'm so proud of our relationships and our friendships as we grow older you know and um, it's 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 the best like music and the power of music it really is uh, and friendship is the best and so we're so 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 stoked to have you guys and then now we're just gonna embarrass the hell out of Greg and let him talk for 20 minutes yeah so two weeks ago we we talked about (laughs) one LA band we talked about what yeah but so there's a complimentary record that Greg picked it's so, it's like side A, side B, you know, it's a big yeah. part perfect. So tell us what you picked for this I uh, picked uh, Scottfish, and I, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, wait. <laughs> They're swinging it like a... It's like a, a, su- a su- subhumans on a rainy day. <laughs> so I, so Jesse picked uh, Wall of Voodoo, which is great. I love Wall of Voodoo, and, I, and that made, got me thinking, because originally when we talked about, you know, we were throwing ideas around, I, it was... I didn't know what to pick. I bet a million dollars, which I don't have, on Celtic Cross. Celtic Cross, yeah. And, then I, and all, that was an idea because they covered Wall of Voodoo. So, uh, uh, but I came, I came up with the Flesh Eaters because so good. LA band, and you know, there's some connections there. 
Oh. Yeah, 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 so good. So there's a lot of connections, I think, between the Flesh Eaters and Wall Voodoo. In yeah. that they don't sound at all alike, but they're they're vibing off old school like Hollywood kind of like L.A. like the I think Wall Voodoo is more futuristic. They've got you know there's like, right, and these guys are like old school beat poets almost this, this to, is like, like, to like to like definitely you said the Doors earlier and like they're because Chris D e is a, yeah he's like definitely a Jim Morrison. Well, he's, he, you know they they always poet. mention. The inspirations of like uh, Bill Burroughs, Much Love, and and, yeah. and even uh, Huge, and, yeah, and, and yeah, Poe. Yeah. But like, but then you hear cramps, and like you hear just like the, the drums are. You and know. also, they're both like the, he's a strange. He's, his his voice is very strange, it's and awesome. so is uh, uh, Stan Ridgway. So uh, I thought it was a good complimentary record. It really to was, the, you know. And this is the one. So like, you know, this is their third album. It's just the one that I gravitate towards more. Then, yeah, that's uh, what I was going to ask you. Yeah. So, is it, you, is, you didn't do this is it the first? Right? Is it the first one that you heard, or oh, you yeah. heard others, no, 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 and then you and you were so, like, you know? So the Flesh Eaters, I bought. I think the first album I ever got out of theirs was like a comp. It was on yeah. SST or something. Yeah, because I, I remember. Hits. I remember hearing just singles. Yeah. yeah that's, so like, I, and I just because I knew the name, and I knew like from like Misfits flyers maybe. Or right. Something, you right. Know? Yeah. And I found it. I know I got it at the book, but like a, a used cassette. Beaver like, Highway. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The one with Claremont Beauty. Yeah. 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 Leg legendary. Yeah. I got yeah. beat up in that part. I got, it was called Maybe Destroyed too. by like, Fire. That was yeah. the name of the tape. That was my first flesh. And like it was, you know, a little over my head. I think maybe being I don't know, early nineties probably. And uh, I don't know if I immediately got into it because yeah. it's sort of like I was into, really into hardcore and really into metal and like anything aggressive. And, and so the flesh eaters so somewhat. Fit into that to an extent because of the weird vocals and the screams. The scream, the screams like uh, yeah. they don't even make sense sometimes. You yeah. know, like you're like, man, yeah. uh, I would have done something different did. if I was producing. I mean, there is a little you know. bit of a metal scream. There, to there is, and, and, sure. and this album in particular is very like. The previous albums, are, the first one's more punk, the second one's a little more like garage. And this, uh, yeah. Who is this? Garage. This is a. I would say this is like a hard rock. I, I think it's like, you know. Is it really? Okay, but it also has like these weird. But it's blue, and there's blue. Well, like, it's definitely, that's why I say like Gun Club and, and Cramps. Like yeah, there's, yeah. And it's the drums, like the way they recorded it. It's yeah. like, it's the same thing. There's some like thing. Bo Diddley beats on here. Yeah, for like, sure, uh, man. Yeah, I totally hear that. I don't know if it's because of the album art or like the, the, the lyrical content. Well, it looks like a But it also album. has like this <laughs> yeah. like weird, like we're drawing in death rockers. Yes. Yeah. And that, I don't know if that was, was cool. an also intentional of, thing, but of in, the time, right? Yeah, for yeah. certainly. So yeah. what was that? Yeah. I don't like, think he was trying to play to that. I think it just maybe was uh, his, in his core. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. was that? Was uh, that? Yeah, yeah. And uh, but Flesh Eaters predated that stuff. Was that eight, and 19, they were 19, way cooler? 1982, maybe. maybe? 45 grave. Huh? The 45 grave. I said predated that. Yeah, yeah. 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 It was 81, 82, maybe? This, this album's 82, but they were, you know, 70s. Yeah, no, they came out like, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and they certainly later on had, every band that we know and love had versions of it yeah, in, yeah. in this band. Like John yeah. Doe and T.J. Bonebreak and stuff. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the album before this, actually. It was, had all, uh, DJ Bonebreak and... Uh, horn so, the horn can, they, They're not on this album because you can tell there's no marimba. The horn section of... <laughs> hey, the horn, the horn section yeah. of Los Lobos. That's like, right. Play, yeah, yeah. Like, you know... And that's another, you know... Like the, so there's... I, to me, it's a weird sort of... It's almost sludgy guitar sound like uh, there's some dirgy kind of parts and like it's it's heavier. No, it's really and cool because like, I was listening to as as uh, the Wall of Voodoo record this morning uh, working out. Sure. No, but I was like this. I'm like I'm like this. Yeah. Should, I'm like this should have been the soundtrack to Lost Boys. Like you know, I'm like hey, you know, right like, yeah. like yeah. you know, like it was yeah. so like I mean, I, I, and and that's the best part of it. Like Death when we do these shows and our best friends say, "Listen to this record," and you're like, "Man, I haven't listened to this since 1987 while I was wearing these bad pants or whatever." And you revisit it and you hear this stuff differently every time. And, yeah. and, and we all listen to records like we listen to like movies, like whole records, you know. Yeah. And it just sounds. I love it when it takes on new. You hear new sounds and new new meanings of it. The one thing I was, the point I was trying to make earlier, and I got sidetracked, is that Chris D's voice, which is, he's, it's, he's kind of like, it's kind of like the fall to he's me, the main, because yeah, he's, he's like, like he's the, he's a, a charismatic Marcus, Marcus lead Smith. singer who probably can't write a song to save his life, but is the only person who's actually 
He's the only member. member of the band. He's the only member. And like, but his voice is very distinct. And it's very, it could be very grating in a good way to me, but uh, but also sometimes he kind of tries to sound somewhat romantic, like Brian right. Ferry or something. <laughs> you're not, Brian, you're not rocking, you're not, you're not yeah, rocking music. I never thought that's about such, that. That's such a good point. And it's like, whispers, and, like, you know? yeah. and you're like, that's, that's, that's totally. creepy. And it all works. He's got a little thing going I on. never thought about so it like that. I never thought about it either. Really it is, is Tom like Atlanta's Chris D is the question. Oh, no. I think it's Greg. Yeah, I, would I mean, say. like, look, <laughs> yeah, that's right. that's a heavy, that's very complimentary. Uh, yeah, because we we had this conversation. Well, actually, earlier. no, none of us saw because we all write really good songs, well, so yeah. we're good. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no me, but he, he does, does he, he does with his band like it's like with one there's there's not the other, you know, and um, uh, and we we all love that, you know, well, to the fall of Marky Smith, like you know, we love that quote. And Marky Smith's like, it could be me and my mom playing bongos. Right, the right. Fall. And that's, and, the same and that's totally because yeah. he he has done this with so many other it's people. It's always been a different backing band, basically. Yeah. You know? It's so fun, man. Yeah, yeah. But you know, we we were talking about this earlier because you know we played in multiple bands together but in the Carbonas. The very he was pointing out to me things I didn't even really notice. That I had lifted. Directly. So you are Christy. <laughs> no, but I had ripped him off. <laughs> oh, I love the subconscious, the way it works. Yeah, like yeah. when we don't know, like unbeknownst to us. Like when, when the yeah. Carbonas first we started, steal things it was somewhat of a knowing. different band than it came later. And it was like, I definitely was trying to ape Christy. Yeah. I tried to be more of a wild, wild unhinged yeah. kind of like singer. So later on, <laughs> so, so later on you'll do some Brian Ferry whispers? <laughs> like, oh, I think it's more my style now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got, you've got some words going on. Um, yeah, because I, I hadn't listened to this record in a really long time, and it was my, the first non-compilation Flesh Eaters record but I, like, I had bought too. Yeah. And, and re-listening to it after being a member of the Carbonas, you're like, man, Greg's been ripping. <laughs> I was, I was like, okay, there's, there's, there, there's a, there, I'm like, there, this is, you know, no one never really noticed. But this that, is, so. but this is no, a, band, no. this is a band. I actually, I like every record of theirs. Like, yeah, you yeah, know, me I mean, too. I find, I find something good in every record of yeah. theirs. You know, I mean, and it's cool to me, like that, because it's different musicians. So that they, in their, I don't know who's writing the songs necessarily. Maybe he hums something to them, and they, uh, you know, I know yeah. Joel Baffert did that. Dick Kennedy, yeah, so sure. He would hum some parts. Yeah, and they he'd hum the melody. A lot, yeah. a lot of, a lot of drummers. So, but anyways, yeah, do it, that. but he, the vocals tie it all together, so it's, it's always a little different. The but presentation. It all, but at the same time, it all makes sense. It's not like completely, you know. It all right. comes down to the doors. Well, to the the, <laughs> the, 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 the thing that you were saying about that he, would, Chris D, was a poet is so evident in his uncompromising way of I'm going to force every oh, exact right. word Look in like this it makes, line. Yeah, I don't right. know if the camera can see this. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to point like, that out he, too. He's like, like look at how many words are in this song. Yeah. Like that's, that's, you would like just like force a, that's more a, than Elvis Costello, Bruce Springsteen, you know, yeah. Fucking, like, so yeah. yeah, he was, uh, not and it works, you know, and it's a that's awkward. A, but that's it, a lot of like that's a lot of charm. words. And and by the way, if Christine's going to be doing any chores down the road, he's going to have uh, um, uh, lit, the words lit up on, yeah. a, on a on yeah. a, uh, yeah. a, tel a tel I mean, I'd hate to be the person that's like. <laughs> I mean, you know, I could, Ozzy Osbourne is pretty easy when they type that shit out for him. But yeah, I mean, I I I have cheat sheets on stage uh, too, with lyrics yeah, in sure. mind, with the first two words of every line written on the floor, and and and, I, and someone asked me, I go, well, I'm never going to look at a phone. The, the, <laughs> I'm yeah, a poet. I just look at this. Three yeah. vocalists here. So what's the deal with with, with lyrics like? Oh, I try to write less and less words every day. To this, what, what, what is I am style? not exactly like that. Yeah. I usually, if I come up with like a two good verses in a good chorus right and it's like yeah. I'll just repeat everything so it's like so. Uh, verse chorus verse chorus <laughs> solo and then the last chorus is the, yeah. the first of the first chorus <laughs> I'm with you buddy yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm not is, that, is, that, is that what we're doing I don't know I meant, I didn't, I didn't actually I, um, man you don't, have, you don't have you don't have to do anything not, you don't want to do okay. man it's this is so nice yeah I love so the. What, what is your what is your take as far as like as a lyricist? I would need a teleprompter like for sure. Um, I bear I, I I need one for uh, now. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah. but uh, I I I just appreciate the hell out of it because I will sit there with a the guitar, yeah. and I will change the lyrics 
to fit. To fit. And sometimes it's a with good the, way with of the, with the your lyrics. With the rhythms, yeah. And, 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 it, and it forces you to make the lyrics more concise. True. Um, but he was not willing to do that. He wrote, and I, he wrote all that stuff first, and then they made a song around it. You know? Yeah, yeah he, he probably was yeah. schizophrenic and bipolar and everything else, and just screaming stuff, and they go, okay, this works. Like, yeah, you know. he, he was like, I'm going to make sure that all of these words fit in here, because all of these words are important. Well, even when he did that record with, um, let me, like, there was, there was an interview years back um, asking John Doe about playing with him. Yeah. And he goes, he goes, well, he goes. When we got to LA, we knew him already as this weirdo poet, and had sure. loved him, respected him. So when he asked us to do it, we were like, of course. And he had friends that were talented who could do this. And he goes, and someone, someone was willing to put it out. Yeah, like, like it really was like yeah. it was like a bunch of ac pretty accidents that like came yeah, together. Yeah. You know, this is very specific. But when I look at this, I think John Lucas. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, ever, that's part of the charm too. Is the fact that they put so much into the layout of the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Like the, so the that looks great. Somebody did all the lettering on that, and then he drew all the song titles onto his hands. That's clearly his hands and his fucking snakeskin pants. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and his really long so, fingernails. Yeah. I noticed that earlier. I was like, whoa, dude. He was doing it. He was. He was doing it. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. The um. When I, when I always looked at, like, and this is very specific, but whenever I looked at, like, Year Zero, if you remember, like, his, John Lucas' songs are like this. Yeah. It's like yeah. the same thing, uncompromised. And I think and, and, and I'm going to put, so the chick that I'm sings, put a thousand words into this song. Everything about it, like, the whole the whole presentation The one that is, sings backup vocals on some of the songs is the one who did all the lettering here, here, here. on here. And I okay. think it's like, the same girl, and I could be wrong, so don't quote me, but... From the, the the Divine Horseman, if you ever heard those, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the same. Yeah. All, all weird, like I was really like all weird. Yeah. All, all weird LA, like yeah, yeah. which we love. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that we're talking about all the new. I love that we're talking about. Me too. I kind of want to do like, like twenty episodes on flesh eaters fucking LA man. And, and just you keep know. on going because I read the the John Doe books. Yeah. Uh -huh. And yes. the Chris D chapters are amazing. I need to read that. Yeah. It's it's. I love it. Like, so, and he's written. I think he's written some books too. Really? I think it's oh, more, wow. more like about cinema and stuff. Like he's a cinephile. Okay, that's so, what I was going to ask. Yeah. Is, is that, that makes that sense I, I remember too. watching like some sort of Japanese horror movie, and then he's were, really into Japanese. Like, like. Okay, so yeah. it was the same Chris D. Because yeah. so, I remember there, there so, was like. he sounds like he's narrating <clears throat> like stuff. Yeah. So he would. Right, um, yeah. It was, it was like I can't remember what it was. It was like something that was like pretty big, like. Uh, What's the sort of like torture movie that was like really big in the early 2000s? Oh, no. oh man. You know what I'm talking about? The audition. Okay. And it was like uh, with with commentary by Chris D. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Like, yeah. Like, Hell yeah. yeah. Like, I know what I'm doing. And he does it in the go. voice, the romantic voice. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 then he's like, then he's like, slave to love. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I want to hear that. Yeah. By the way, the first two yeah. Roxy Music yeah. records rule, oh, and they're gothic as hell. Yeah, they're they're amazing. Amazing. yeah I mean, sure. but the first two are just so gothic. Oh, it's unreal. I love it. Yeah. I'll take the 80s, uh, Roxy. Me too, <laughs> me too, me too. Like, uh, and Brian Ferry solo, I'll tell you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's got a two good songs on every solo record, I think. His well, voice is so goddamn romantic. <laughs> I'll take him the makes way. Me want, he makes me want to get married again. Good to see you guys. Yeah, yeah Brian Ferry. No, it's like... Um, I, now I just want to look up Chris D's extra work that he's done. He's got like chapbooks and like stuff too. Like and he's, he definitely felt like a, a little bit, there's the, yeah, that's a, he's, there's a lot of. A, so a he's a very literal guy. Yeah, pull that up. You're like, asking the wrong guy. <laughs> so what is elected? I went to I went to art school. <laughs> I failed art school. So like I don't know if it's set. I mean I always play the. Thank My you, Life Matt. to Live, when I, I, I take that record and I DJ, and I, that's the song I usually play. What an open. But I love Wedding Nights as well. I love. Which uh, has a great music video. So, right? My so Name in the Mud's a great song. Yeah, because A Life to Live is like maybe like for that time Such period. Such an uplifting the, the, song. And the best uh, opener of an album. Yeah, Just and because he sings it one, you know, he does the romantic voice. I love it, man. We and, then, <laughs> and then he busts out the, halfway through and fucking, you know, like, goes for it. Like, patented yowl. And it's like, just elevates it so much. It's like, you know, it True. makes you want to cover it or, you know, it's a great song. Makes you want to dance. The Wedding Guys has really cool lyrics. I don't know what the fuck they mean, but like, 
it's like my picture's in the paper, but or, but you can't see my face. So that's, so that's <laughs> down in Mexico, we threw so, the wedding dice. So the, I mean, the, it's, the it's, it's a, the a bucket. The people also that, cinematic. Yeah, cinematic. So the, pe- the people that he was he's inspired by. Yeah. Um, uh, used to do things they called like newspaper clippings, like Stones did it, like they Burroughs, like they grab stuff from the paper, take clippings, and they make that song. Like yeah. we all know that. Like, and uh, there's something so beautiful about it. Like, and it's like sarcasm and sardonic, and like it makes no sense. And you're like, why are you saying this here? Never, never. Like, and you, you almost think he would do that, but he doesn't. No, I think he clearly wrote like poems and screen, yeah, and, I scre- think and they, screened. Yeah, they shoehorned a song around. Yeah, I, he'd I, already written. I, I think sure, he was like sure. walking, and and he wrote like these like. Almost like, uh, like uh, schizophrenic, like sc- like screams of like two hundred like, words, uh, and then that he's like, guys, this is what I got. Yeah, hit me with a G. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he may have hummed a bar or something. Yeah. And like, hey, something like this. I'm like, I don't know. We'd have well, to ask the, and, and the delivery is it can be done in so many forms of music. So, yeah. it's, you know, sometimes you know, and like. I'm, to me, like maybe it doesn't come totally work perfectly all the time, but that's part of the charm. Like you know. Oh you man, I, I hate. Especially I hate when he's like trying to spit the words out like so fast, it's like yeah, that, that doesn't fit. But uh, it's, it's almost better that way. I, I hate perfect records. My yeah, probably yeah. two favorite singers are Marvin Gaye and Otis Redding, and I love when they're out of their minds for five days and yeah. they're voices are cracking and they're almost out of tune like fuck perfection I'll yeah, never yeah. perfect like performing you yeah. know like it's it's like and that's the best part about it when you go back and revisit and you're like oh man I didn't notice this last time and I've been listening to this now for 20 years and I, I like what I never you know he's la- at the end of that track he's laughing yeah. at the end of that track he's crying like whatever you know um, so, yeah, it's, I don't know, it, so this is, this was your, your pick out of all of the Flesh Eaters albums. And Just this was, more or less because I, I gravitate, yeah. I've always, you know, and I, and I'm, I have a weird, uh, I don't really have a complete Flesh Eaters collection either, so I don't sure. own the first one. I, I think I have the second one only on CD. What's and the I first have, uh, one? The second one is this. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's, now, it's, the second one's called A Minute, uh, minute to Pray, A Second to Die. But also, you, 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 you said... Total Gun Club style. But, yeah. Yeah. but you, but you name, said you came... Name a song after the album on the next album. On the album. premium, yeah. yeah. Fire yeah. of Love, yeah. yeah. But, but like, yeah. Love, Fire of Love. But you said you came from like... Because you came from like this... Like, you know... Certainly metal and then punk background. You're like, you're like, no, this is the thing that was like the next closest thing that I would be attracted to. I mean, it was like I knew they, they had a punk connection that I and I knew the name from yeah. from. I, I want to say I'm 100 percent sure from the Misfits. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's, it's on totally, Ruby yeah. Records. Like, which yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Walk Among Us. So, and I'm pretty sure I had like some reproduction of a early 80s flyer on my wall when I was like in middle school. Oh, was it the, the graveyard with the corpse upside down yes, hanging? Yes, yes. And it said flesh it, yes. Yeah. So, so I, I knew like the name and like so I found the tape at fucking Bucknut. It was on yeah. SST Records. Yeah, how, how, how many okay, no brainer, but then yeah, I listened to it and it was saxophone and shit. I was like, how many? <laughs> how many awesome records? <laughs> it took me a couple of years to figure it out, but I, then I fell in love with it. And then, how know, many awesome records do we love now and listen to with a glass of wine on vinyl that we bought on tape? Oh, <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's I mean, a, I still there's certain like the albums best, that I own and, yeah. that I fucking love so yeah. much that I only own like yeah. set. Yeah. Well, it's a romantic. Uh, we love um, sentimental moods and. We're, we're, we're romantic dudes. You know, we love that. Something like Brian Ferry. Like Brian. Yeah. It always goes back to Roxy. Music. And Chris D. Yeah, and Chris D. Yeah. He's only half romantic. By the way, Chris D. Yeah. playing with Roxy music right now. Right. <laughs> Man, that would be a hell of a That would be amazing. Movie. I would go see a Roxy Music tribute band with Christy singing for it. Really, really confuse some fucking white people. <laughs> <laughs> you got it wrong. I mean, with the Ruby Records connection with the Gun Club. Yeah, that too. Because yeah. yeah. I'm. That was another band that around Ruby's that like time a, that I, I sort of like uh, bought too. You right. know, like trying like, to. I don't know about this. And right. They're like, okay, I get it. And Miami was the one, and holy yeah. shit. Miami, Miami's so good, man. I, I think about 
like Flesh Eaters and Gun Club and a lot of these bands that were like sort of tangential to the to the core punk scene. Yeah, like the LEC, same time, late were, 70s, were branching yeah. out. They, branching out. You know, like, they had their own mindset. They weren't really trying to fit in. There. The, and the yeah, cool thing really about back then was is um, well, if you had an open mind, I mean, like Dwight Yoakam probably played shows with them. Like in, in L.A. Like, you know, right. he, he came to L.A. The in the late 70s and, like the and was playing shows. Right, the, yeah. and then yeah. Yeah. Like, certainly the Blasters, yeah. 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 like yeah. Billy Alvin, or, yeah. Bill, or, or uh, Dave, Dave Alvin, Alvin yeah. uh, was, uh, yeah, in the Flesh Eaters. So. Yeah. They were, all, they were all sharing stage. And, and Stan were, Ridgway from Wall of Boots yes. was also in the Flesh Eaters at some point. L.A. is a he was, really he was, fascinating he, place. I think, I think he played on, I think, maybe two, like maybe two records, actually, you know. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's... Because, yeah, he, he was just gathering musicians. But also, it's out. also like us, man. You know, you're friends, and, and, you, and you're like, hey, man, I'm in town, I'm doing a song. You want to do backup vocals? You know, wh yeah, why, why yeah. wouldn't you? If you're friends and fans of each other, why wouldn't you do that? Right. You know? That's fun. Yeah. And, and I once you're... Yeah, yeah I, 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 I produced a techno record during the pandemic. <laughs> I, I, like, I like half of it. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, I mean... What's your Thank what's you. your thoughts on the like the, the, the catalog of flesh eaters even all the way up to the modern era? So they, I don't they we, do were, we were kind of talking album. about that because I yeah. like I said like the, what I actually even have like I, didn't, I never owned all the flesh eaters sure. records and I have a lot of like weird There's compilation one off like, records because you don't know what's a record and what's a comp. So like, like you know. there, I know there used to be there was like some album in the early '90s that I used to see at Fantasyland all the time and I never bought it. So I, I can't comment on it. But right. we, we, we sort of listened to He just put out a record. He did a record in like 2006 or something. No, it was, it was, like it was just, just, it was just It was just him, though, with everyone like back on. No, you know, it's the same. He just got some people, I'm sure, and did an album. Yeah. And, it, you know, we listened. He redid My Life to Live on it. And, it, you know, I don't know why people do that. But yeah, that's a weird thing. I don't care, man. Silver Chris, machine. It's Chris D can machine. do whatever the fuck he go. wants as far as Actually, I Actually, we, we all agree on <laughs> that. If, maybe I don't think it's as good, but I don't care. We all agree on that. Who Chris, it wasn't it's a bad. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, no, he's, those, if that dude came to... He's plagiarizing himself, and that's cool. Anywhere within five hours from here, I'd go fucking see him. If he came I'll go with like, it. Drum and did something. I drum? That'd be crazy. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's not plays out of the park. We're not even going to give him the Earl? If he plays in the, <laughs> the, the parking lot of Boggs, I'm, I'm there. Yeah, exactly. You know. no, I mean, and then you guys are going to back him up. That's the thing. Oh, I'm into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that would be interesting. Well, that's uh, a wonderful place to be, and he, he, he is that. He probably could go to any city and go, Here's the 15 song set list, and you get a great band like Carboners back them up, and why wouldn't you? And you, you have to remember amazing. when you're playing that you just play through the song and do not follow the vocals <laughs> because it's trying to fit as many words <laughs> in as possible. <laughs> yeah. When, it, when, it, when he goes like, when he, go, when, he, when he turns around and goes like this, the song's over. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Man, um, yeah, for a second I thought it was like a lady. Now it's, it's like fingernails. That's, that's, that's and you're like, no, that, that's unless she has man hands. It's, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, that's Chris. That's Chris. Man Chris hands and man, by the way, we're working on a new album called Man Hands and Snake Pants. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. What do you got, James? Well, we got a letter sent to us. What? From uh, from Doctor Okoe. <laughs> from uh, the Blue Ridge Legend. Mountains. James is the best. Uh, now he he's a big big fan of Christy and a big fan of. Uh, Greg King, and he said that uh, as we all are. Greg King, Jesse Smith, Tom Cheshire, an amazing lyricist. Hello, guys. James Joyce does what he does. Oh, so, you're you're the writer. Sure. I'm He's a writer. great rapper. He's a great rapper. <laughs> a great rapper. Uh, Scoffish. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear you're going to talk about Chris D on this episode. Yeah, and, and we I, have. And I wanted to. Talk about lyricists in bands. And oh wow! Who do you? Good question already. Bring Sorry. forth as the lyricist that has oh, influenced man. you as Me? as lyrical writers. I, I, this is a good question for all three of us. For, for, for the the singers, yeah. and lyricists. In so bands. off the top of my head, real quick, I would say, um, well, these days in my old age, fucking Bob Dylan. Um, Yep. Chuck D. That's right. Uh, Nick Cave up to 1982. Yep. Leonard Cohen. Uh, uh, Richard Hell. Richard Hell. 
El DJ. There's some, there's some uh, <laughs> uh, great kid, go! <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, there's no wrong answer. Like, you know. No, I mean, definitely not El DJ. El no, no disrespect, love him. We love uh, El Duce. Do you love that guy? I don't know, man. Uh, I mean, I love Chris. Do I, do I don't have any. Chris D. I don't. I don't. I mean, like, I, he, he, yeah, but I, I clearly don't write like like, like he does. So, are but, you like Peter Murphy? Do you like? I don't I love Peter anything. Murphy. I just like. I, I am it's, not it's like gonna. From your soul, I can you say mean? that, but it's I'd be totally full of shit. But uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, By the way, we're all. Everything small, I try to and try we're to all. Make fit within whatever, you know. So your vo your voice is an instrument. You just you just say. Yeah, I, I usually come up with like a, like sort of a, a yeah a pattern first or something like that. You know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a even, like, I like I usually come up with guitar or something else first too, and like you know. I mean, the last thing I I'm a big fan of self-deprecation. So self-deprecation? What? Self-deprecation. <laughs> Deprecation. So, Me too, yeah. so um, if it's like, if it, it makes sense with making fun, like, like Frankie Stubbs from Leatherface will be like, in my hair, it's beyond repair. Like, says a beautiful yeah. line, and then makes fun of himself. Silver lines. Yes. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm a... I, I'll, it's like I'll, swell maps or like fucking swell you know, maps, yeah. football I'll, or something. Yeah. But I'll settle but with. Honestly, I'm just trying to make something catchy. I'll but settle, <laughs> but I guess it comes down. I don't down, have any very clever things. It so. comes down. I, it I, comes I, down to swell lines. He's 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 uh definitely downplaying his uh <laughs> like I, he, he worked a lot harder under than I do. So. Yeah, because I'm not as smart as you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> very nice. Very I'm clever. Um, I mean, like if. if if people saw like the lyrics to Frothing in the Mouth, the Carbona song, they'd be like, oh shit, that's what he's saying? He's like, he's an English major? <laughs> like, um, and it's like, no one can tell what he's saying because he's rattling it off so fast. He's rapping. Yeah, it's a great um, song. Man. But, uh, yeah, so he's definitely downplaying whatever he's saying right now. It's total. That's what you, should, you gotta do. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Humility. Uh, I think he puts really a lot of thought into his words, and I think if you listen to G.G. King, records and like read along to the lyrics it's pretty evident in that and that there's a lot of like, passion put doing. to that yes yeah. for sure so don't believe whatever crap he said about guitars sure it, it, <laughs> that's in, uh, humility works for you but yeah. also now we want to hear what jesse has to say about this oh i part. have no idea i don't know like i, I like I, I i think that my lyrics have been so bad in the past that I, i'm oh, working really hard I don't know, at man. making them better um and I, I, the most important thing for me writing songs, at least for the last record and moving forward, is to have m more of a story or more of a sense of sure. place when I write lyrics so that there's like, oh, it, it just gives it a richer content to the yeah. song. So who, who does that? I mean, like tons of tons of singers. Stan sure. Ridgeway. You know? Yeah. 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 Duce, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 That's um, true. It's a great point. So, um, so uh, focusing on a one lyricist is, is, is tough for me, but, um, yeah, but that, that whole, that, that scope is what I'm looking for. Ex execute. What books do you have of all the lyrics of a, of an artist? Do you have any books that are like the complete lyrics of blah blah blah? I don't think I do. I, do. I, I, I have I have fucking uh, Bruce Springsteen and Nick, and Nick Cave. There you go. So, but and and I, I love Bruce Springsteen. I love sure. Nick Cave, but I also hate Nick Cave Juggalos. Like the, the, like there's yeah, more and more of yeah, yeah. I'm Nick like Cave. yeah yeah. Like I'm, a huge, I'm a huge Nick Cave fan, but it's 2002, man. I'm fucking just done. Oh, I, I, I like him. I haven't heard a bad record, but I do not like his fan base at this point. I'm just like, you guys are puke. We're, we're, we're <laughs> by, the, by, hey, by, by the way, by the way, um, by the way, we're, we're fans of the underdogs here. Don't diss Juggalos. They're good people. No, I mean, I like ICP. I, lo I, I like Nick Cave. <laughs> I, I, I got news to you. I hung out with Darren Sanders in Little Rock, Arkansas and partied with 16,000 meth head Slipknot fans a Hell few yeah. weeks and ago. they were all good people. They were awesome. And yeah. I, I grabbed... I grab this guy and I go, God damn it, you're beautiful. And I try to kiss him. He's like, What's wrong with you? I go, There's a good like, chance. I go, I go, I go, I go, I go, There's a good chance me and you are the best looking people here. <laughs> and this dude's like, Get off of me. Like that. Shout out to Darren Sanders, my brother. I just want to say um, that this show and everything we do, uh, we're constantly reminded that everything is, well, fucking futile. 
and just short. And and we're losing uh, loved ones by the day. And I, uh, I'm a, you know, I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual, and we talk about this. And uh, I'm grateful for all the loved ones I have in my life. And uh, man, I'm sorry to bring it down. Celebrate rock and roll and love <laughs> and life. I'm and, glad we could do and, this. And cheers and and, and cheers and and, uh, awesome. and every day try to be a better human and a better artist. Boom. That's it. Oh, yeah. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. You guys for having us. Peace.